you're able this morning. We say you're powerful this morning. We say you're worthy this morning. Even the seraphims and the cherubims adore you and say that you are worthy, Jesus. There is no one else like you this morning. We worship you, King of Glory. There is no one else like you this morning. Thank you, King of Kings, because you are able. Thank you, Lord of Lords. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We can all have our seats and thank you, praise and worship for uh, that powerful ministration. God bless you. Uh, this particular time, without uh, uh, going further, I want to welcome the servant of God who is going to minister to us this morning. How many are ready to receive the word? Amen. God bless you uh, with the spirit of willingness and the uh, spirit of uh, having an open heart. We can all uh, appreciate the servant of God. Our brother who is our secretary in the youth department, uh, brother Geoffrey Awiti, as he comes in the name of Jesus. Please help me appreciate him as he comes in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, our, our assistant chairman. Thank you very much. Praise God. Praise the living God. Good morning. God is good at all the time. Tell your friend that I'm saying hi. Yes, I know the room is, um, is cold, but we thank God. I'm called um, Jeff Awiti. I'm born again. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I'm blessed with a wonderful, beautiful, wife. She's uh, called Lydia Josephine. She's with us in our online church. So I know she's, uh, yeah. The reason why she's not here with us is because she's taking care of our newest prince of the house, Gemaya. Praise God. So this morning, uh, I'm, I'm very humbled to be here. And I don't take it for granted that God has given us opportunity that he wants to speak to us this morning. Praise God. And um, I just want us to go to the book of Matthew. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6 verse 12 we'll start from verse 11 this is a common this morning a very God. common a very common scripture and Elf. it is something that we normally we normally do we'll start from verse 11 this and um, I'll read Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Give us our today, give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Praise God. I want to call upon uh, my sister-in-law, uh, where's Maureen, so that she can pray for us uh, before we proceed. All right. Um, 
Yes, Brother Arthur, come and pray for us as we proceed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We glorify you. We lift your name on high. No other God equals you, our mighty Father. That is why we come before you, humbled and ready to receive from you, our Father. Lord, we are hungry to receive from you. Feed us with your word, O God. I commit the servant into your hands. Turn him into your vessel, O God. Put your words into his mouth. May he speak of that only which comes from you, our Father. Jehovah God, give us a spirit of understanding and listening, so that when we leave this place, Lord, we shall be a changed people, my Father. We pray believing in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you very much. There's a very uh, servant of God that I treasure so much. Not that I don't treasure you, I treasure you too. He has been with me through thick and thin, and we thank God. Praise God. My, I've been asking God, what do we, God, give us a message that your power, that you might experience what you want for us at a time like this, in a season like this. And um, forgiveness is something that I myself am not even strong enough to talk about it. Praise God. I myself have even struggled even to forgive some people. Praise God. But that is what God wants the church to know today. And I just want us to know something very interesting. The moment you will know that you are imperfect and you are serving a perfect God, so many things, you will understand so many things. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, your neighbor that I am imperfect and I'm serving a perfect God. I am imperfect and I am serving a perfect God. Praise God. And if you want to look at forgiveness, in the book of, in the book of Matthew chapter 12, and forgive us our debtors as we also have forgiven, and forgive us our debtors as we also have forgiven our debtors. Go to forgive me so that I can also have, so that I can understand. Praise God. I'm really struggling to get this point. I hope God is going to give me grace to speak to one person in this congregation. Let me start by saying this. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is letting someone off the hook for their offense. Kwachilia mtu. He has wronged you and you've let him go with it. Forgiveness is to pardon and to hold no grudges and bear no malice and make peace. Praise God. That is forgiveness. A very difficult thing. And I remember Peter asking Jesus that how many times should we forgive? And Jesus, Jesus being Jesus, because we are being told Jesus is the best mathematician that has never lived, he told him 70 times 70. That is 400 and 90 times in a day. I ask myself, how many times should I even forgive my son? My son is in the stage of, actually my sons, but more specifically, there is this one that is able to talk, Garnix. How many times should I be in a position to forgive him in a day? Because he is in a stage of discovery. He is the stage of testing waters. 
Praise God. And how many times should I even forgive myself? Because forgiveness that we are talking about, we must learn even to forgive ourselves. Forgiveness starts with forgiving yourself. The more, because I say that we are imperfect. Because if you start looking at how, if you start looking at yourself, you look at even some things that you have done. You ask yourself, do you even deserve to be in a place like this? And sometimes we have, we have not forgiven ourselves. We've had a bitterness in our heart to an extent even when God wants to speak to us, God is still, we have blocked him. Because the opposite of forgiveness is what? Bitterness. This bitterness has even made some of us to suffer even some sickness like is it ulcers. Yes. Ulcers. You even go ahead and even suffer some sickness like even cancer. Cancer of the stomach. Praise God. Some of us say that when I am bitter, I cannot even look at that person. When I am bitter, me want to swear him somewhere. Praise God. I cannot forgive him. And then, and then, and then God, is, God is a very wonderful God. There is... We live with people, and this is what people have been saying, I'm yet to experience, but yeah, it has been brought to my attention. That women are good at keeping records. It can even tell you that the day you went to your home, you did this to me. Nanili, nanili kuwacha tu. Right now, you have started. And I'm leaving you. Praise God. In fact, I hope some of us have seen, there's a video that is going viral about uh, a wife complaining to the, to the husband. The way husband has been, there's something the husband did. Eh? Eh? Forgiveness. And then the husband is very interesting. He started mentioning names to this lady, to the wife. And the wife just melts down and decides what? To forgive. Do you know that thing will be, it will resurface again? This day. Because the forgiveness that we have is a forgiveness that we keep records. We keep records of the things that has been done to us. On a date like this, you did this. And you came to me to ask for forgiveness. In our relationship, I'm one person that is very quick in saying sorry. Even in some things that I'm not supposed to say sorry, I will always say sorry. Because I've come to realize that forgiveness is the best thing that can happen to us. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. I want us to go to the book of Genesis chapter 32 verse 24 to 30. As we now get into understanding the power of forgiveness. Genesis chapter 32. I'm taking us to a story that um, we're very familiar with. Chapter 22, verse 24 to 13. Genesis 32, 24 to 30. The Bible says, So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jab Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go for its daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked, What is your name? Jacob answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have, have overcome. 
Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he, he, then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Penen, Peniel, saying it's because I saw God face to face and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him and passed Peniel and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. Forgiveness, what forgiveness brings. I'm talking about now the power of forgiveness. The moment we forgive, the moment that we are able to forgive, it will bring transformation. Jacob was transformed. Jacob was a bitter man. He knew that his brother was waiting for him. His brother Esau. And all of us know the story of Esau and Jacob. He took his blessings. Praise God. And Jacob was wondering, God, I am going to meet you. You are telling me that he is going to bless you when, you when you go back to your people. But there is something here that is bothering Jacob. He knows very well. He is even worried. How is Esau going to receive me? Because there is something that is happening when Esau had already, there was already a meeting that Jacob and Esau were to meet. Already people, already a person was already sent to go ahead. And Jacob was, the way Jacob was planning, Jacob had already planned himself in a way that even if the people of Esau were going to kill him, or were going to kill his, 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 his livestock, he had separated them. There is a portion that he had put ahead. And then there is a portion that he had put behind him. Because for him, he was, because he was looking at the encounter with the Esau as if it was going to be a done deal. Because he ran away with the Esau's blessings. And the Esau has been bitter all this time. But what happens? The moment we learn to forgive, we will be transformed. And Jacob is being transformed. He's being transformed from Jacob to Israel. What do we need? What do we normally do? There are people who are, there are people that we even said and we tell them, I cannot forgive you. The moment you are telling that you cannot forgive somebody, there is some blessing, there is some transformation that you are still blocking. God wants to transform you. God wants to give you a new name. Yes, they know you as a witty. But God wants to change the name of witty to something else. But you are still struggling with forgiveness. You are still struggling with bitterness. Praise God. Jacob was transformed. Because he let everything to God. Because now he was ready for his brother Esau. But there's something that he did. The moment when he was encountering God, he encountered God because his heart was ready for forgiveness. My sister, I want to challenge you this moment. That the moment you are able to forgive, you will be a transformed person. Praise God. We desire transformation so that our name can be changed from Jacob to Israel. Forgiveness brings transformation, changing of one's nature. Because the moment you forgive, Praise God. That bitterness goes away. And you're now being transformed to a better person. The moment you learn to forgive, you overcome the devil. Because the devil is the one that brings bitterness. And the moment you are transformed, even Yule ambaye anakuchukia 
will be transformed. Look at what happened to Esau when now they meet with Jacob. Look at what happened. They went and embraced one another and they wept. Because that bitterness that was in that bitterness that was in Esau. The moment Jacob encountered God, he even encountered Jacob's enemies. So I'm telling you something today that the moment you are going to learn to forgive God is going to even overcome your enemies. I'm trying to imagine somebody who took my blessings from my father. Somebody who, who ran away and now he wants to come back. Look at how it happened. A sow went and hugged his brother. And I am trying to imagine tears of joy came. That battle that they were planning, it never took it never took place. Because the transformation took place. The moment that you forgive, the moment you forgive, you will be transformed. Your forgiveness will even change people that you don't want to forgive. People that have been harboring bitterness with you. Another thing. Forgiveness brings blessings. Genesis 31 verse 55. Early the next morning, Laban kissed his grandchildren and his daughters and blessed them. Then he left and returned home. We remember very well when Jacob had left with Leah. And is it Re Leah and who? Who are the daughters? Rachel and... Am I alone? Rachel and who? Rachel and Leah. And Laban was, Laban was bitter at a, at, a, at, a, at a point. And he started pursuing these people. He ran after them. And Jacob started becoming worried. And he found them. Because one of the daughters had already picked the gods of their father. And Laban came and ransacked the place. And we know what happened. Eventually, the moment that Laban realized that these people are no longer mine, and he said something very interesting. I know that you have my two daughters, and even the folk that you are having, they are all mine. Praise God. God knows. God knows. God knows even that the air that we breathe, niyake. God knows even that the everything that we own, niyake. God wants to bless us. But what is it that hindering our blessing? Ile chuki unai na rafiki yako. Ile chuki unai na jirani yako. It is hindering your blessings. I see Laban kissing the grandchildren. I see Laban speaking blessings on the children, on the family. Sometimes we've even, we've even, we, we've even annoyed our parents. I know of people that even their family went, sold land, sold everything so that they can go to school. Their parents were walking barefooted. They have tattered clothes. So that their children can go to school. They have struggled. But what comes back after we have gone to our schools? We even forget that they are the people that our parents, our fathers have our blessings. We forget because we we still have that bitterness. 
We don't know that, that they are the people who hold our blessings. I remember something very interesting. As we were progressing, after my wedding, after my wedding, we came to church. I was rebuked because of one, two, or three things that happened on my wedding day. And I said, we are not coming back to this church again because you were rebuked. In fact, that day I left church with a heavy heart. The moment I started saying that I'm going to accept this person as my father, the moment I released him, I've realized that I've served God more, much better than the way I was before. Because there is no way you can still go against your father and prosper. Because fathers are there to rebuke us. Fathers are there to bless us. Let us not be people that after we have been rebuked, you, you, you now turn your back, you now say that I don't need him again. In fact, I was telling myself, from where I stay to Kibera around the churches, there are a thousand churches. Where is it that I'm coming to Kibera? Instead of even, instead of even that person coming to embrace me, does he not see that I have a wife? Why is he embarrassing me in public? Do you know how men sometimes don't want to be embarrassed in front of their wives? We men. But not in front of my wife. Not in front of my people. Because you are interfering with my ego. But God was preparing something. Praise God. Are we a people that when after being rebuilt, we are going to say that now we are going back to we are going back to somewhere else? This is my story. I was rebuked in front of that my lovely wife. And I said that I'm not coming back. I, I was having bitterness. I was asking myself, does this person know the pain that I've gone through to the point that I am here today? And I jewel. When I needed this person, when I needed these people, do they, do they know whatever the struggle I've gone through? Yes, God knows. God knows. And God wants to help you. And the moment we learn that our fathers have blessings, we will go to before them and say, God, I've forgiven you. My daddy, I have forgiven you. I release you in my heart. And for sure, I have served God better than before. Bitterness will make even things that we need to achieve, we cannot achieve them. Because I, st I, I started by saying that I am imperfect. I'm not perfect. I have my flaws. I have my weakness. I have my challenges. Right now, if you look at my weakness, some of you might not even want to say hi to me. And I believe that you who are there, you also have your weakness. The moment we learn to understand people with their weakness, the moment we learn to even forgive them. You look at you look at pastor and you ask pastor, Sasa, I don't expect my pastor to say this to me. That your pastor is a man. And men are, in fact, there's a say that say that men are prone to what? To mistakes. <laughs> Look at Jesus. You know, people, people sometimes just want to appreciate Jesus. When you call Jesus, Jesus, come into my life. Be with me. I would try and put Jesus in, 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 right now, if Jesus was here. Jesus is in church. He found people selling things in church. Amekuja hapo na nyaunyo, amekanyaga watu, amechapa watu kisawasawa. And remember Jesus is God. Son of God. And then after that, 
Jesus even never even said sorry for those people that he punished. Praise God. I'm waiting for Pastor Arthur to come and apologize to me. I'm not going to that church till Pastor Arthur apologize to me. Akuniambia vizuri. Did Jesus apologize to those people? He never. And imagine. So imagine if Jesus was in Kenya. Amewakanyaga vilivyo. Amewanyorosha. Then after that, he said that this is my father's house. Hakuna biashara haramu itaendelea katika nyumba ya babangu. He rebuked those people thoroughly. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What happened to you when you are rebuked? <laughs> What happened to you when you are rebuked? When you are caned, when you are punished? What happened to you? When you are in when you are in a place of of work because there are some of us work when you receive that show course letter from your boss you know there are some things that we don't even expect our bosses to be doing we don't even expect our bosses to be laughing in public we even don't expect our bishop to be laughing in public because we see him as a holy person We see them as people who are close to God. Let me tell you something. They are human beings. They are imperfect. The moment we learn that we are imperfect people, we the word sorry will be in our lips. Mtu atakukosea tu hivyo sema yenyewe pole. And that sorriness you will tell that person sorry you are sorry and you will not harbor it and nobody should even know that somebody hurt you oh god you are speaking to me see that hey, i need i need god's forgiveness i need god forgiveness to be my portion church of god I said forgiveness will open even doors for us that we least expected. The moment you release there is that freedom, there is that there is that kind of energy that comes out whenever you release somebody. I've forgiven you. Praise God. My brother, I have forgiven you. My son, I have forgiven you. I challenge our church today. I look at the church of Kebera today. We don't know why we are all here. God is talking to us. God is telling that that he want to bless us. God is telling us that we want us to enjoy the best of this world. But there is something that is there is something that is hindering us. People there are some of us who are saying that senior alin silia senior linyongelesha vibaya wewe weka tu hapo senior linyongelesha vibaya because of that bitterness you are having challenges even at your workplace because you're seeing your boss and you're saying that this is your boss that he, he doesn't he, he he doesn't even deserve to be your boss hasta ili kuwa mkubwa wako Because God has put us in a way you know man man has been put in a very unique way that even anything uta criticize you are the only person who knows how things are supposed to be done you look at you look at you look at chef you think that who chef angeifanya hivi ingekuwa mzuri sana you look at your boss you're saying that boss should have done it this way You are the first critic of everything. You don't see that imperfect people. We are imperfect people and God is here to perfect us. Imagine something something was telling me that the only person that is imperfect is that person that the only perfect person. Mwenye hata sumbua mtu yote. Even akipigwa hata lia 
is that person lying in the mortuary. That person lying in the mortuary, that is not the perfect person. Because from there, akuna mtatakosea, amelala hapo tutuli, ametulia. But me and you, we are imperfect people. Living in imperfect world, serving perfect God. The moment we realize that we are imperfect people, that ata mimi naeza kukosea, I look at my brother and said, I can't, even me, there are some expectations that umenieka hapo. Mwe, kuna vile watu wamewekana. Right now, I have a sister of mine, amenieka tu hapa, huku. Eh, huku. That thing, you could not have done it that way. But I'm just a piece of clay. I'm just a piece of clay. God, you are the potter. Come and make me to be a perfect person. But in that process, ata kuchonga chonga, ata kuchonga. In the process that is still shaping you, what is it that you need to do? God is telling us, by the way, who made the lake of fire? It is Jesus. It is God. But most of us don't want us to go, don't want us to go through the lake of fire. Because we don't want to be helped in getting to know who God is. Church of God, I'm talking about the power of forgiveness. I say the power of forgiveness will make you be a transformed person. And I say it. The moment Jacob was, was planning to meet his brother Esau, Esau was bitter. But the moment Jacob was transformed into Israel, the moment Jacob was transformed into Israel, the bitterness of Esau went. Some of these things that we go through, we need to start getting, we need to start getting encounter with God so that our enemies can come and hug us. Praise God. We have enemies in all spheres of our, of our life. We have even, even, even here in church. Even here in church. We have enemies. At our places of work, we have enemies. Even where we stay, we have enemies. What are you doing with your enemies? Never assume them. The people say something say that ah, literally, well, I don't eat, I don't sleep in your house. <laughs> my brother, my sister. The moment you have that attitude, that I dark kati yonge, I can live without you. That after all, you are not, you are not my father. You are not my mother. You are, in fact, I am, in fact, I liked, I saw another comment. You know, WhatsApp has made things to be very interesting. That people that will not accept me, I put them in the what? In the dustbin. My enemies, I take you and I put you in the dustbin. I don't need you. Jacob needed a sow to be transformed into Israel. That transformation. I want to challenge the church of God today. Your enemies, you need to pray for them. Your enemies, you need to pray for them because they hold the blessing of your next station. They hold your baton for the next station where you are heading. And you need to sort them out. And by sorting them out, you need to sort them out on your knees. You need to have a moment that you are going to wrestle God. That God, that time has come for me. That I must know who you are. Because he holds your blessings. There are some people that are holding your blessings. And you are put them in the category of your enemies. There are some people that are holding your key. But you are put them in the category of your enemies. Your father is holding your key, but you have neglected your father. Akuflia uko inje. 
Never ever talk evil about your father. I'm talking about even your biological father. Never ever. Even your spiritual father. Because the moment you have bitterness for these people, who is coming to bless you now? If you look down upon your father, and this is the guy that even schooled you, who is coming to bless you now? If you neglect those people, who is coming to bless you now? Praise God, church. We are living in a time that we need people so that we can go to the next level. I'm not saying that you bribe your way so that you go to the next level. God is telling, reminding the church of Kibera. The church of Kibera, I want to take you to another place. But that, for that first of all, some of you are having bitterness. Church of Kibera, we are full of bitterness. God wants to take us to another place. God even wants to take us to our, to our land. But some of us are still in the, those ages. That Arambi, we have done Arambi so many times. Praise God. God wants to take us to the next place. But some of us, we don't want to move. Some of us don't really want to cut up the cold. But God is reminding us today, I want to transform the church of Kibera. God has been talking to the church of Kibera every now and then. That I want to transform the church of Kibera. I want to transform the church of this nation. But it's because of our sin that is holding that blessing. It is written, my hands are not short. My ears are not deaf to hear you. But because of your sin, you have turned my ears to be deaf. I want to make you a great nation. Church of Kibera, God wants to take us to where he feels that we should be. But because of the bitterness that we have in our hearts, because of the bitterness that is causing us to have ulcers, God wants to treat us today. And the only medication that he has, the only vaccine that he's telling us today is to rise up and say, I forgive you. Is to rise up and say that I forgive my, my enemies. Is to rise up and say, I'm praying for my enemies. Church of God. God wants to transform us. Just the way he transformed Jacob to Israel. Before Jacob met his brother Esau. And when they met, they hugged and they wept. Because of the transformation that God was doing in, 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 in them. God wants to bless us this morning. Just like Laban blessed his children. Laban blessed the, the daughters, the grandchildren. Because he was in a position of forgiveness. What is it that is holding you, church of God? Is it me that I'm holding you? Is it your father that is holding you because you have a, you have a bitterness in them? I hope today I'm speaking to that one person who wants to go to God. God, please transform me. Bitterness has been killing me. Forgiveness allows us to see ourselves and others made in God's likeness. The moment you will learn to forgive, you will see my father here, Father uh, Pastor George, as God. Because we are made in the likeness and the image of God. Church of God. The moment we learn to forgive, because this is what God wants us to do, we will see his people with a good eye. We don't see him again as an, my enemy, but I see him as, as my source of blessing. I will not see him as just my sister, but I will see God in him. 
if we can love ourselves enough, we should be in a position to forgive. And I pray that God will give us the freedom of forgiveness. Church of God, wherever you are, I don't know which type, which, I don't know which, whom you need to forgive this day. But I pray that God will enable you to understand that you need to go to the next level. You need to go to the next level. You need to go to the next level the moment you realize that there is freedom in forgiveness. Some of us are holding bitterness. The moment you are holding bitterness, you can come up with jifunga. Na wakati ambapo unajifunga mambo mengi yatakupita wakati watu wanasalamiana wewe utamwona kama adui wako Na wakati ambapo unaona kiumbe cha Mwenyezi Mungu kama adui wako hapo ndio wakati ambapo baraka za Mwenyezi Mungu zinakupita Wakati ambapo unaona mama yako kama adui yako wakati unaona mimi kama adui wako baraka zako zitakupita I pray this morning that we have the spirit of forgiveness. Let's rise up and we go before God. Reflect, take a moment of reflecting. Take a moment and, ref and reflect. And just pray that you struggle with God today. So that even that person who is not forgiving you can forgive you when you meet him today. Because God wants to take us to the next level. God wants to transform us. God wants to bless us. God wants us to have freedom in forgiveness. Talk to God. Ask him what is it that you're telling him us this day. That God need to forgive you. God, 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 thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, oh God. We bless your name, oh Jesus Christ, oh Jehovah God. A moment has come, oh Jehovah God, that give us the spirit of forgiveness. Give us the spirit of forgiveness, oh Jesus Christ, oh God. That release in us the spirit of bitterness. Release it, oh God. Release it, release it, oh God. We want to move to a new place, oh God. A place where we are going to say that for sure you have blessed us, oh God. A place that we are going to see a transformation, oh God. We thank you this day, oh Jesus Christ, oh God. At this moment, I just want to pray with one, with one person. That person that is saying, that person that is saying, that God, I need your forgiveness. Our pastors are here to pray with you. I want you to come forward so that we can pray for you. That person who is saying that this thing is killing me, that that person is saying that I need to release, I need to be transformed, just come forward so that we can pray with you. If you are there and you are listening to this voice, you need prayers, you need, to be, you need freedom of forgiveness. Our pastors are here to pray with you. If you are there and you want us to pray with you, this is a message that should, should take you to the next level. If you are there and you are saying, God, I need your forgiveness. The time is here. Our pastors are here to pray with you. If you are there and you are hearing my voice, the time has come so that we can pray for you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, Jesus Christ, oh God. We are praying, we are praying. Let's all rise up and stretch our hands towards our brothers. We pray for him. That God to, give, to answer him. Thank you, Jesus. If you are there, we don't want to leave you behind. We don't want to leave you behind. But we want the forgiveness to go with you. We want the freedom to go.